Hey guys, I'm the 50s Kid, and this is a video on how to do a rear drum brake job on a 2000 Honda Odyssey. Alrighty, I've got the car jacked up and got the wheels off. <clears throat> what I'm doing first is I'm inspecting the drum, and I can already see, and I can feel actually, that there are some grooves in this drum right here. I can actually I can get my fingernail over them. You can hear that as my fingernail scrapes over those grooves. And those kind of correspond, there are corresponding grooves in the shoes. This is actually why the brakes are squealing and squeaking. As the shoes press against the drum, those grooves vibrate and cause squealing and squeaking. You need a perfectly smooth surface. So I think that's where this job ends tonight. So uh, here's what the brake drum looks like after it's been turned or remachined. Um, I just went to a local brake shop and, uh, and they did it for me for about 15 bucks a drum. Um, I recommend that you take a picture of this on your phone because there are a lot of uh, individual components to this and it's kind of easy to lose track of them. Uh, so having a picture to, to go back to as a reference is, is absolutely helpful. Take a picture of all areas of the car. You know, take a picture up here, down here, take close-in pictures, turn on your flash, make sure that you force the flash so you just, you get, you can see every single component. Also, as, as we take things apart, I'm going to lay them down on the ground in the, in the places where they were up here so that, you know, I've, I, I can just go right back to it and pull the proper components and put them back on. So first of all, I'm going to remove this spring, just get it out of the way. This is the self-adjusting mechanism. Now this is the actual self-adjusting mechanism. Um, if, you're, if you're not able to get the, the brake drum off, what you need to do is you can see this hole right back here. This, this actually, this hole shouldn't be open and exposed, uh, by the way, there should be a rubber grommet on it. So. Uh, for some reason that grommet is missing. And uh, what, you, what you basically need to do is take that grommet off and slip a screwdriver um, in through there, just like this. And you wanna turn the mechanism. This is the adjusting mechanism. If you turn it this way, you can see that the screw is gonna, the, the thread is such that it's gonna move, move the fork out and it's gonna press the, the shoes apart. And, and they're gonna come right into contact with the drum. And the idea when, you're, uh, um, when the brakes are adjusted properly is the, the shoes are almost touching the drums, but not quite. But since we need to get these off, we're gonna, we're gonna back the uh, self-adjuster down the other way. This is gonna draw the fork in this way and make it easier to get the shoes off. That's really easy, so I can finish the rest of it by hand. So I'm going to start by removing these clips right here. These should just kind of be removable with your hands, yeah. And this is just like a little little nail that, uh, that comes out. So that's, that's all it is. Um, if these are all rusted on yours, you might want to buy a hardware replacement kit. Um, it just gives you new springs, new clips, things like that. There are two options of how to proceed at this point. Uh, but we can either remove this lower spring with uh, needle nose pliers, or I can sort of spread the shoes apart with my hands and get them past uh, these two points right here, and then the whole thing will just kind of come off together. I actually just did one there. Easier to do one. So I kind of got it in front. And then there, it's just an easy way to get that spring off. We want to get this spring off from the front end here. Not the front end, but uh, from this end here, the spring end. Because this end has a little, a little, it's shaped like that. And it's, it's really not easy to get out. You can't just kind of pull it out. So. See, it's even difficult that way. So this end has to come out first. Now, I can take this self-adjustment mechanism, again, put it down on the ground. And now we have this back shoe, and I just wanna disconnect it from the parking brake cable right here. So. Just 
just like that. What we want to do is spread this little clip with a screwdriver and get it such that we can uh, pry it off. Once I've got a little bit to grab onto on the front, once I've got a little bit off, I can just kind of lever it out. Just like that. We're reusing this, so I'm setting that in a safe place. Yeah, see, not much left, actually. Okay, so I'm going to spray this the backing plate down with uh, brake cleaner right now. I've got like my little catch basin underneath it to catch all the junk. not just going to spray it, I'm actually going to wipe it away as well because there's grease and stuff that I want to get off of here. I'm going to peel back the rubber boot and inspect on the inside. See there's a kind of brake fluid dripping. Not too good. I know what you're saying, solvent, rubber. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's just for a few seconds. It evaporates almost right away. I was just doing that to get the brake fluid mobile and uh, get it out, get it off there. But the actual seal, this, the rubber seal on the piston, that's, that's inside, inside of the housing. Same thing on the front one. I'm uh, peeling that back. That one actually looks good. There might have been a slight ring of uh, brake fluid on the inside, so. Getting that off. I know these wheel cylinders um, have been replaced recently, so um, I, I believe they're fine. But um, if, you're, if you can't actually move your piston, if you can't spin it and turn it like I can, see I can easily turn this piston, there's a slot in the side um, with a screw with a screwdriver it should be very easy. But if you can't move it at all, that your piston's probably seized. So uh, if you're having brake problems, that's that's likely your suspect, and it's and it's time to replace the wheel cylinder. So as you can see, there are three points that are shiny: one, two, three, and then on each side. So those are the three spots that the the shoes come in contact with and actually grind against the metal. So those are the spots you have to lubricate as well as this point right here and down here as well. I'm going to come in here with a little uh, wire wheel and just kind of clean these surfaces off. You want to check the old shoes, put them up against each other and see if one is longer, significantly longer than the other. And it looks like these are just about the same. Might be slightly longer, slightly longer over here, but, but uh, not significantly. Um, if, if, you're, if you have one that is significantly longer, uh, you have to, you know, the, the, your shoes are not identical. And so you basically need to figure out which one of the new shoes is longer. And the way you do that is you, you take three of them and you um, take three of your new shoes and put them up together and you'll find the one that's uh, either longer or shorter. And that's how you'll be able to tell which ones are the long and short ones. But uh, in my case, these are all the same. So uh, I'm just going to get two of them here. And you'll notice on the old shoe, there's this little pin. That was actually for the, the self-adjusting lever right there. And uh, with the new shoes, I actually got a new pin. Just it came loose. And I'm going to pop that into the hole that it was in. So to get this pin in here, I think I'm going to have to hammer it in because I can't seem to press it in with, this, with my needle nose. So there we go. 
pins in. Got the cleaned up parking brake lever. Um, it, I'm pretty sure that only the front part of it's actually gonna slide against the, uh, the shoe right here. Um, the way I'm sure of this is I, I just test fitted it into place. And you can kind of clearly see once you get the shoe there and there that the, the brake lever never actually touches the backing plate. It's actually kind of held captive on the shoe. And the part that touches the backing plate are these, these areas right here where these, where these indents are made. Those co correspond to the three areas that are shiny on the backing plate. But since this lever is going gonna, is gonna to contact the back of this shoe here, I'm just going to lightly lubricate these surfaces that are going to touch metal on metal. I'm going to apply just a little, little bit of grease to the, to the, the areas of metal that are going to slide against each other, or the area of this metal that's going to slide against the, the shoe. Just a little, just, uh, you just need to kind of grease this lower surface below where the notch is because that's the sliding surface. You see the notch sticks up proud. So I really just needed to grease the uh, inside right there, just like that. retaining clip. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of grease on the backing plate. I'm going to clean up the self adjuster here. You see, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna put just, just a tiny amount of copper grease on the threads here. I'm gonna put some grease on the inside of the fork here. And yes, that is too much and I'm going to wipe off the excess. <laughs> grease only needs to be on the inner surface there. But dirty grease in this particular case really isn't gonna it's not going to harm things really. More like the things with the threads. Things that are moving. Things that are going to get bound up. That's when I worry about excess grease. So I'm just testing where this fork would go here. You can see how it's touching. The inner side of it is touching there. But also the top of this here and beneath it are, is actually touching the, the fork itself. So I'm going to put some grease right there in that spot that it touches. You can see there's a depression that it's made in the fork already. I'm going to put grease there. So I've actually noticed something um, here on, on the self-adjusting mechanism, which I, I didn't notice earlier when I was cleaning it. But this, this piece right here, actually, I believe is not, uh, it's, it's supposed to be, um, if you look at if, if I look at it closely here, you'll see there's this little, uh, there's this little bend or this little cut in the metal right here. What's actually supposed to happen, supposed to be happening is, um, these, these two little fins are supposed to be bent down and they're supposed to, the, the two fins are supposed to be bent down and lock in between this channel right here so that when this turn, you know, when it turns or if it, or if this wants to turn, it can't because, it's preventing it, you know, uh, those would be preventing it from doing that. And it looks like they got bent inward. And so I'm going to repair that. Uh, basically, I'm going to, well, maybe it'd be easier with a screwdriver here. I'm just going to come in here, sort of bend them down. I noticed this because, um, it just, it didn't quite look right to me. And I went over to the other side real quick to check it. And, and I saw that. So it's supposed to sort of be like this. There's actually two, two bends in the metal where it's supposed to be bent. Kind of like that. Well, I don't think I can get it any better than that right there, but that's going to work. And I think also that, um, 
since this is a sliding surface right here, this actually spins against this, this metal clip. I'm gonna grease that metal clip so that those sides can slide freely and, uh, and the self-adjusting mechanism can turn easily. So this really isn't, um, I don't think this is about controlling noise as much as it is just allowing the parts to, to be able to operate freely like that. So I just put a little bit of, little bit of grease on this side and right there. So now that thing can just, can just spin really easily like that. And that's, yeah, that'll do it. So it looks like I've rubbed, I've rubbed my other grease off in the process. So I'll just re-grease inside the forks and put this thing together. Okay, so I'm gonna hook the parking brake cable back on, bend this little spring back and come in here, get it on like that. Put the self-adjuster in, the wide side goes here. Kinda like that. And I will come and I've already got the spring in in this uh, in this shoe. And if you forget exactly which hole the spring goes in, just go look on the other side again or refer to your picture. Um, I remember that this on this end the spring hooks in that that hole on there. So I'm gonna come like that and I just get the uh, I can just get this into the self-adjusting mechanism. You know what? I probably will need to hook it on first. Kind of do one of these. And then come in here and hook the spring on. It would probably make this easier if I back to the self-adjuster off a little bit. So, you could think about doing that, but hey, that worked. Also could have just put it back on. I could have, I could have pulled the spring over, but I just didn't want to wrestle with the spring that way. It just seemed like a little easier to just get it all on and together and then just kind of spread it apart and get it on like that. Lots of ways to do this. Take the bottom spring here. Actually, I think what I'll do first, what I'll do first is uh, put these little pins back in so that the whole assembly is held, held down on to the backing plate. Like that. Make sure, you, make sure the shoes are in the right spots. Get it to find the right spot. There we go. I'm here with the bottom spring and use my pliers to just kind of stretch it across and get it in. Just like that, basically. And um, I've already added some lubricant, um, some grease right here on the, actually I think I should probably add some little, right on the very back too. Again, just where the metal surfaces rub. I've already added a little grease in there. So that's the self-adjusting mechanism. And that spring for it went there and hooked down into here. You can see how the shoes can be moved up and down like this. So um, what we need to do is get them centered and, and get them kind of adjusted so that they're, they're just in the right spot. Um, what I'll do is I'll put the drum on and I'll kind of spin it around to kind of get them centered. But I also want to, uh, I want to I adjust the self-adjuster so that the shoes are pressed out just to the point of contacting the drum so that they're good and, and in the perfect place and we don't really need to do a lot of self-adjusting and the car can just be driven away. So what I'll do after the drum is on there is I'll come back, back in here with the screwdriver and I'll move the, I'll move it this way. I'll move the self-adjusting mechanism this way, and that's the way that that turns the that's the way that spreads the fork out and moves the shoes apart and into the drum. So that's the way you got to think of it. 
I've adjusted the self adjuster the self adjuster way down. Now I should be able to get the drum on easily, which I can. Very, very easily. You can see that the self adjusting mechanism is is well back of the actual shoe. And I think what I'm gonna do is just move it and adjust it so that it's it's just there. It's just at the shoe, but not any further, or not pressing it out any further. And that's about as far as I'm going to take it. And from there, I'll actually use the, the properties of, this, of the self-adjusting mechanism itself, once I get in the car and test drive it, to, uh, to adjust it in the final way. What I'm feeling for is just a slight drag, like I believe I've got there. The unevenness is because the brakes, the shoes aren't exactly perfectly centered. They'll get centered once we start driving around and applying the brakes. But I just want to hear that. Now I'm sort of hearing a, a kind of a constant drag all the way around. That's pretty close enough. And now when I put the tire on, go drive around a little bit and, and uh, hit the brakes, the brakes will center. I'll, put the, I'll push the emergency brake a couple times to actuate the self-adjusting mechanism. That will adjust the brakes until they're, they're good. If, if they don't feel good, I'll come back in and, and try to and, you know, check it out, try to adjust things a little more. But uh, from here, I think uh, it's, it's time for a test drive. Okay, so I just took it for a test drive and everything felt great. The, uh, the rear brakes were adjusted just right. And um, what I actually did on the test drive was I performed a bed-in procedure. This is important because um, I did machine the drums. And so uh, what you need to do whenever you're starting with brand new drums or rotors, or if, or if you go get your rotors turned and, and you get the, the machine surfaced, you need to transfer some of the, the, the brake lining material to the, the actual uh, rotor or, or uh, drum. And uh, the reason this is important is because the brakes aren't really gonna work effectively unless that happens. So you need to perform a bed-in procedure in order to do this. What you're literally doing is transferring just like a, a microscopic layer of the, the pad or the shoe onto the surface of the rotor. So the way you do this is um, you need to get the brakes hot, basically. So you kind of go driving around and you need to you basically perform a series of, uh, of speed ups and slowdowns or accelerations, decelerations. And the first time you'll, you want to accelerate to about 35 miles an hour and then apply about moderate brake pressure and bring your speed down to about 15, 10 miles an hour and then let go of the brakes. Never come to a complete stop. Um, do this about five to eight times just to kind of get the brakes warmed up. Again, still never coming to a complete stop. And then accelerate to about 45 miles an hour and then apply the brakes pretty hard. You want to you apply them very firmly and again decelerate to about 10, 15 miles an hour. And do that about three times and then basically pull over and park somewhere. Try not to stomp down on the brake all the way and come to a complete stop with your foot held on the brake. Um, because if you do that while the brakes are hot, you, you risk creating like an imprint right on right where the brakes have uh, the, the brakes have stopped and, and are pressing on the rotor or the the uh, the drum. So you, you don't want to do that. So uh, that's it. You basically pull over and you let the brakes cool for about 15 minutes, and then you can you can uh, drive as normal. Um, so that's about it. Thanks for watching.